Today's 4th of July Sunday case study comes with someone diving into shallow water with this MRI. I want to point out that with it being Independence Day and any Independence Day I've ever been on call, I have always run into a trauma in which somebody does something to injure themselves while under the influence of alcohol. So I have the case of a 17 year old male who was hanging out with his friends at the pool for 4th of July and he was pushed into the pool by his friends. He fell in the water and then began to float to the surface face down and all of his friends thought that he was joking. It wasn't until a little bit of time went by that they realized that something was wrong and they jumped in and pulled him out of the pool. He coughed the pool water out of his mouth and told them that he could not move his arms or legs. Here is his CT scan. Here is his MRI scan. So his neuro exam upon arrival, he was awake and alert and talkative, and he was able to shrug his shoulders, but he was unable to move his arms or legs. In terms of sensory exam, he did have some preserved sensation in his fingertips and in his foot. So my questions today are, what's the diagnosis? Uh, what can we do in the field from when he is pulled out of the pool and to when he arrives to the emergency department to help stabilize him? Uh, you saw the test that we ordered. Now, my question is, what's the treatment and how quickly does this treatment need to be initiated? And then my last question is over the next few days uh, after this injury, what can we do to help improve his neurological outcome? Stay tuned tomorrow for the full video explanation and please everybody be safe this holiday. Answers to this week's case study. We had a 17 year old kid that was pushed into the pool that was unable to move his arms or legs and suffered this injury on MRI. So basically what happened is when he was pushed into the pool, he transformed into a dive and dove into shallow water. And if there is one thing that I can have come across to this video is please, please, do not dive into shallow water. So he suffered the C5 burst fracture with spinal cord injury. So we classify spinal cord injury by their Asia grade or an Asia impairment rating, and he was an Asia grade B. This means he has an incomplete spinal cord injury, and this means he needs to get to the operating room fast. My first question was, what can we do in the field to help improve his neurological outcome? And the answer is spinal immobilization as soon as his injury is detected. So basically, as soon as he says he can't move his arms or legs, ideally he is on a backboard and in cervical spine precautions with a hard collar in transport to the hospital. And he should not come out of that immobilization at all. So he went to the operating room as soon as he rolled off of this MRI table. And what we did was we did a C5 corpectomy. So basically we went in and removed this entire bone, which was broken and compressing the spinal cord. So basically what we do is we have to make an incision on the front of the neck to get to the spine anteriorly. This is a cartoon, but you see where we remove the bone and then the entire vertebral body is removed, which exposes the spinal cord and then in its place we put a graft and that replaces the vertebral body and the disc above and below to decompress the spinal cord completely where it was compressed. This is a picture of what a cervical corpectomy looks like. This is not this exact patient's x-rays because this is the C6 bone but here you see that the cage is in the space of where the vertebral body was and there's a plate and screws that hold it into place and eventually this will grow together. This patient also has posterior immobilization to provide a circumferential stabilization of the spine. And my last question was, what can we do after surgery medically to help improve his neurological outcome? Because a patient with an Asia grade B can certainly improve because they have an incomplete spinal cord injury, meaning things are going through. So after decompression, we want to try to maximize his recovery. Pushing the mean arterial pressure greater than 85 for five to seven days has been shown in the literature to help improve neurological outcome. So basically that means using drugs to help push the blood pressure high so we can improve the blood flow and recovery to the spine. Other grayer areas to help improve spinal cord injury outcomes is hypothermia, meaning keeping the patient really cold, and the other one is steroids, which are also controversial in the literature. This patient awoke with increased motor function in his hands after surgery, and he went through an exhaustive rehab program. He actually improved to an Asia grade D, and that means he was able to function independently long-term. He still has some neurological deficits, but he did regain the ability to walk. 
So I hope you guys learned something this week about spinal cord injury, which is one of my absolute passions as my mother has a C4 spinal cord injury and I hold this near and dear to my heart. So thanks for listening and I'll see you guys next week.